Today we're talking about lens hoods, but not the usual what are they for, instead rather why are they the shapes that they are. Hoods come in all manner of sizes, however they usually fall into one of two styles. Either flush fronted ones which are basically a cylinder, and then the ones with the wavy cutouts which are known as pedal hoods. Now the choice of shape that is used is not random and it's not just for cosmetic appearance. There is actually specific reasons as to which type of hood you might see chosen on a given lens. But before we get into that, allow me to take a moment to tell you about Skillshare who are sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes available on a wide range of topics, covering things like photography, video production, web design, art and writing to name but a few. And it doesn't matter about your skill set either, whether you're a total beginner or wanting to expand your existing knowledge. The classes on average run for between 30 to 60 minutes and each one is broken up into chapters that you can come back to as and when you please, which makes them easy to fit around even the busiest schedules. Basically, Skillshare has something for everyone. But if you don't believe me, why not check them out for yourself using the link in the description down below and the first 1000 people to do so will get themselves a one month free trial. There are lots of videos out there that explain what lens hoods are and how you use them, but I've only ever seen one that actually attempted to explain the shapes behind them. But that video stated that petal hoods are used on zoom lenses and cylindrical hoods are used on primes, which simply is not the case. I mean, right there I have a zoom lens with a cylindrical hood and next to it two prime lenses both fitted with petals. The style of a HUD design that's chosen will generally depend on what the lens's widest focal length is. If the lens can achieve a short focal length, then a petal HUD is normally favoured, whilst lenses whose shortest focal length is still very long will then generally opt for cylindrical. And lenses whose shortest focal length is somewhere in the 50 to 70 region will carry a mix of the two. Such as, for example, most 70 to 200 mm f 2.8s you see fitted with petal hoods, even though their subsequent f4 equivalents carry cylindrical. Cylindrical hoods offer the most protection because they fully envelop the lens, which makes them stronger than the equivalent petal designs that have huge unsupporting overhangs. As well as higher end cylindrical hoods often having protective rubber trims around the leading edge. Now, you can put cylindrical hoods on a wide angle lens, but as you can see here, if you shoot through a cylindrical tube with a wide angle lens, you then start to see the tube appear around the edge of the frame. Now, you will note the distance from the edge of the tube to the corner of the sensor is greater than the distance from the edge of the tube to the sides of the sensor. Basically, it's square peg round hole. So, in order for the HUD to not impact on the image, we'll have to shrink the depth of the HUD down until we reach a point where it is no longer visible. But, because the visible distance was greatest to the corners, then the sides and the tops will have disappeared much earlier and will not be offering as much shading. And this is where petal designs come into play, because they cut back the parts which would appear on the sensor rather than just cutting back the whole thing. But you will also note that on petal hoods, the top and the bottom are longer than the sides. And that's because most cameras don't carry square sensors. They're rectangular, with the view being wider than taller. Meaning the sides of the hood would then become visible sooner than the top and bottom. So all petal hoods will have sides that are shorter than the tops and bottoms, and then the bits in between will be cut back even further. The concept for this design is that all parts of the hood would then start to appear over the sensor at roughly the same time. And you can see this, if you take a petal lens hood and hold it up in front of a wider angle lens, you can see that from the camera's perspective, the visible gap that the hood creates appears to be roughly rectangular. This then means that the depths for each part of the lens hood can be made to their maximum possible in order to offer the most shading without being seen. Whereas with a cylindrical hood, it's restricted by how deep it can be before it starts to show up in the corners, and then you don't get as much coverage to the sides and the tops and bottom. Now that doesn't really matter so much for very long focal length lenses, because the viewing angle is so narrow that the lens hood would need to be huge before it even starts to show up in the corners of the frame. 
But it is why you get different depth hoods for different lenses, because they've all been designed to work best for that particular lens. It also means that hoods for zoom lenses are generally only as deep as they can be to work best with the shortest focal length. Because if they made the hood to work perfectly at the long end of the focal range, the moment you zoom out, your hood's going to start to appear in the image. Well, this is normally the case anyway. There is at least one very intriguing exception to that rule in the form of Canon's old 24-70 f2.8 L Mark I. Because the lens hood for that looks incredibly deep compared to other 24-70s. And the reason for this is because that, that lens had the rather unusual design that instead of the barrel being shortest at 24mm and extending out to 70 it actually extended out at 24mm and retracted back in to 70 Now the benefit of this for the lens hood is that then the hood can be made deep enough to work perfectly at 70mm because as you zoom out, the front of the lens is going to move up towards the front of the hood, so the hood never becomes visible in the image. Very clever. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this video on why lens hoods are the shape that they are. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you found this video helpful, then please consider helping us out by pressing the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so, and then hopefully, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.